season finale of It's Our Time. Again, I'm your host, Edith Young Ovo, and today we have a special guest. I'm really honored to have her on the show. Uh, we have Shayon Adegun, yes. and she <laughs> is amazing, y'all. When you hear her story, ah, man, <laughs> you're going to be inspired. So, Shayun, thank you for being with us today. I really, really am honored. Like, this is such an honor. I have <laughs> an you. Olympian in my presence. Oh, <laughs> daddy. <on. laughs> but no, so, uh, Shayun, uh, just to kind of kick it off, you know, tell us about yourself, you know, what schools you go to, what degrees you have, and what is your profession? I kind of already alluded to it, but go ahead and say <laughs> Well, I... Um, I'm a University of Houston Cougar. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Yes. Okay. Um, I actually graduated from U of H twice, and then I graduated from University of Houston Clear Lake, and then okay. I graduated from Texas Chiropractic College. Listen, she loves the U of H so, system, obviously. I am mean, a diehard Coug. Okay. But yeah, as you can see, I kind of went to school quite a bit. I'm quite the bookworm, to say the least. So okay. um, I actually have two bachelor's, two master's, and a doctorate. So, um, I am... I'm sorry, can you say that one more more time? She said she had all her two, two, and one. I know it's really obnoxious and no. it's crazy because I always say like I never like saying how many degrees I have because it just sounds like well why are you in school for that long like what are you looking for in education but I'm a knowledge seeker <laughs> yeah. and um, it also just kind of worked out to where um, some of the things that I was studying uh, they were combined programs and because uh, I was interested in both I just was like you know I might as well just do the two yeah so um, yeah I got um, two bachelors, uh, one bachelor's in biology, one okay. bachelor's in exercise science for health professions, mm. and then I've got a uh, MED in physical education and motor behavior, and an MS in health and human performance for, they changed the name of it like right before I graduated. Okay. The okay. Thing. So it's basically um, health science and human performance, uh, more on the biomechanics side because I'm okay. a bit of a biomechanist. And then my doctorate is in chiropractic. I actually just became so a chiropractor. I messed up. Let me um, <laughs> uh, let me uh, address you correct, doctor. Oh goodness, Shayla. Me. <laughs> let me uh, let me backtrack that. My apologies. No, I don't even. It's so interesting that you say that because here we are in April. I graduated in December, but as soon as I graduated, I went off to the Olympics, and I've basically been back and forth, but more so gone for the past three months. So I haven't even really been able to settle into the idea of oh. making sure that I've gotten everything for my doctorate and in my practice. And so the idea of doctor just isn't in my brain right, right now. now. I'm just kind of like, man, you know, it's just, it's just me. Ah, uh, but you have the paper though. You have the I do. certification that says doctor. Like, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay, so you have five degrees. All right. Yes. Let's kind of like backtrack it. Let's walk it back. Um, when you started off at U of H, did you know that you wanted to do something in health? You already knew off the bat, yes. like, that's what I want to do. Because I know yes. a lot of Nigerians, it's either health, it's mm-hmm. either law, yes, engineering. Yes, yes. And then, so you did the biology, which, you know, every Nigerian is familiar with. Biology, you want to know the biochemistry, crazy thing. chemistry, I even, I just, all these things, right? It's crazy. So, okay, but I didn't even do biology first. Biology was actually the I second. just got the biology huh. degree with the doctorate. Okay, um, because the the program that I was on for my doctorate was after you've done a com- completed a certain part of it, mm-hmm. then there's only a few classes that you would need to complete your biology bachelor's right. but because I had had the previous degrees those a lot of those credits were Transferred. fulfilled okay. so I only had one class wow. to get the biology degree and so I was like do you think I should get it and I was like I mean what's the point point?" and people were like yeah you only have one class you might as well yeah. just fulfill it you never know where the biology degree will come into place you do have the biology background and I was like oh okay so that's the only reason why I ended up getting that degree um, but I actually was in more I've always been in like the sports medicine mentality just Mm. because of my background and then some health issues that I had growing up and going through college um, actually had motivated me into like cardiology and so that's what actually wanted me to do more so the muscle testing and just the fitness of athletes and how they can become their best in anything that they do athletically okay 
So y'all, she's a uh, like a natural born athlete, y'all. Like this is. I mean, she's, she's dope. <laughs> so talk to us about sports, right? You had a very, you're very passionate about sports, mm-hmm. and um, I know that you did sports at U of H. So you know, what sports were you in? Yes. Um, I grew up actually being a basketball player. Hey, she's a hooper, Yes, y'all. I'm a hooper. Hold on. What, yes. what was your position? You, was you a, will you be, was a one, no, two, you will be three. surprised. I was a oh, five. Tell me she was a, a five. A four and a five. I was Girl, coined, I'm five, six. <laughs> so let me, let me just get this out there, right? So I was coined the smallest power forward in the Chicagoland area. Wow. Um, because... I had I was leading rebounds and I was like ah. maybe top three in the entire the, the whole so uh, area. Well, the problem not the problem, but the the beauty in what my issue was was that I had like almost a forty inch vertical. Wow! Right, it was kind of crazy for a female. Like I thought I was gonna dunk. Like Listen, my sophomore year, natural born athlete. <laughs> I wasn't playing when I said that. Like, I literally thought I was gonna dunk. It was a dream of mine. I thought I was gonna be in the NBA, and everyone thought I was gonna play basketball. Mm. But because I'm five six, and it's difficult to explain to people until they actually see me play that I can jump pretty high. Yeah. So um, eventually, my coach was like, my track coach was like, Sean, those legs were born to run. And I was just like, I'm a ball player, I, this and that. But I transferred high schools in the middle of my junior year. Which really destroyed. If you know, you know how basketball works. A lot of yeah. times you grow together with your team. your team. And so when I got to the new school, I still got on varsity when I got there, but the dynamic was a lot different, yeah. and um, I had to kind of start reevaluating if I wanted to do basketball because I wasn't getting any looks from D1 schools. Mm. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I might have to start looking into this track thing because I was on varsity as a freshman mm-hmm. in, in track and field, but I didn't, I just ran fast, raced the boys, and that's it, you know, like right, I didn't think right. about track. Natural born <laughs> athlete, okay. Uh-huh. So then eventually, um, when I got to my new school, um, I ended up deciding to spend a little bit, a little bit more energy on track and field, ended up doing really well, and uh, went to University of Houston on a track and field scholarship, but wow. it wasn't initially, I wasn't even recruited, actually. Wow. I was a walk-on initially going to the school because I wasn't fast. I, and not that I wasn't fast, it was just like I, I was committed to basketball. Yeah. So I didn't have any times. Like I was running, and for people who know track and field, like I was running 15.2 seconds in 100 hurdles in high school, which is like, that's like, baby girl, you're not going to college school on track. <laughs> I mean, right. not not D one at University of Houston. Yeah, you know, you, you might be able to go some, you know, do some other things. But um, then by the end of my senior year, I ran thirteen point six seconds. So yeah. I like dropped a significant amount yeah. because I invested in the time. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you mentioned Chicago. Yes. Area. Is yes. that where you're from? Yes. I was born and raised in born Chicago. Born and raised in the yes. child. Yes. That's right. But she, you know, she Nigerian. You know? <laughs> <laughs> get it twisted. Get it twisted. Exactly, exactly. I came from the shot town to Houston mm-hmm. and you did track all the way up until your bachelor's, finish your bachelor's. And exactly. then after that, you said, I want to pursue grad school. How did you get into that mindset? Like, I think I need to do more. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I had decided to forgo all athletics after I was done with my undergrad. Well, I was like, I'm gonna put in these four years and I'm gonna be done, you know, because- Is there a reason why? Yes, actually. Um, I had a heart condition, right? Mm. And so it wasn't until the beginning of my senior year that I had my second heart surgery. Wow. And after that, all of a sudden I started breaking and cracking into world times and I became one of the world world's elite um, hurdlers. Wow. But before then, it was like I was always limited to my physical abilities. Right, right. And I didn't realize how much it was hindering my ability to, to do well until after I had the second surgery. So just mentally, emotionally, physically, I was yeah. drained. Yeah. Because my training sessions felt a lot different than other people's training yeah. sessions. If other people were dying, I was really dying, you right. know, to the yeah. extent where I was almost afraid you know when you get tired and you put your hands on your knees or you know you crouch down i would never do that i would just keep walking no matter how tired i was i would keep walking because i was afraid that if i did that or if i laid down and closed my eyes and rested that that'd be it like i would be gone oh. so i you know i just had different types of um stresses that i had to deal with mm-hmm. that when i was like once i get done with school i'm good i've done i've committed i've given everything i had and i'm gonna go to grad school and i was moving to tennessee and i was doing all these things wow then when i started cracking these world times my coach was like uh ma'am uh uh, uh, uh ma'am 
<laughs> you say you're going where? So <laughs> we got robbed in three years. I think we need to, you know, right. do this. And so all of a sudden now I'm being looked at, you know, for Nigerian team. And um, I, my coach decided, look, I don't want you to leave. I want you to stay. Let's let's see if we, if we can give this thing a go. I think you could be a world-class hurdler. And I'd like you to stay. And I'd like to offer you a job to be a coach here at University of Houston. Wow. Immediately out of college. Like, I graduated in, what, June? And I was a coach in September. Wow. And it was just a blessing from God. So I ended up, that was how I ended up doing my first master's because I was already going. I had already gotten accepted into Tennessee, into yeah. uh, Tennessee Knoxville for my master's program. He's like, well, if you can find it here, we'll pay for it. Wow. And I want you to coach here and we'll train. Like, wow. So it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, I could do that. I could do all of I that. I could do all that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's, that's how I ended that up. That is dope. Okay. So. What is one piece of advice that you would give to an aspiring athlete who says, you know what, I'm trying to juggle all these different things and I think I want to pursue grad school, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. What what something that you would encourage them along the way? I would definitely tell them to just do it. Just go for it. Uh, the biggest thing that we do as just humans is we limit ourselves to what we can only see. Mm -hmm. But sometimes what you can see is is a lot more shallow than what you're capable of doing. Yeah. And so you're only trapping yourself to, to what you, your mind can't really accept at the moment. But a lot of times you don't know what you're capable of doing until you've done it. Mm. Most times when you get into something and you're like, oh man, there's no way I'm going to get it done. But in retrospect, you look back and you're like, man, I did that. Yeah. So it's no longer impossible, obviously. Wow. And so I always encourage people to just go for it. Just you know, do it. Just do it. Just take the step. Just just believe believe in yourself because at the end of the day it all boils down to your passion your commitment and your time management okay if you're able to get all those things together then you will be able to do just about anything in life wow y'all so we're gonna go on a quick break and we're gonna be back with Shay she's gonna tell us much more about her story. Never seen a bobsled team for Nigeria or any other country in Africa. But this year, all that changes. As these three young women become the first. You can live in your own legacy. The main reason is because she loves the sport so much. She said that this sport needs to grow. She started an entire federation. Like, this is her brainchild that she wrote on paper, her idea. So for the love of bobsled, in order to, you know, for the growth, to looking out for the growth of the, the, the sports, it's like, we need to get this to Africa. You still don't get the magnitude, the effect of this thing. Like, she's going to be written now, like, someone's going to write her down in history. Like, it's lit like literally history, and not just history in America, and not just history in Nigeria, world history, because this is for an entire continent, you know? So it's like, I'm literally watching someone with the same blood as me create world history, you know? It's like, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Again, I'm your host, Edith Young Obo. Make sure you catch all of the episodes of this first season on It's Our Time Talk Show on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, It's Our Time Talk Show. And again, I'm here with our special guest, Sheon Adegun. And I'm just, just honored. Again, I'm just honored. I'm honored. <laughs> Y'all missed it before. She was telling us her story about running track and field at U of H. Um, her medical condition that she had and then we're going to fast forward to we're right here in the present 2018 made some major <laughs> major moves tell us about that oh man 2018 2017 2016 16. goodness it was just a blessing to be able to say i lived in these days in right, these years right. um being able to start what became the first ever African bobsled team was something that I never could have dreamt of in my entire existence. I don't think y'all heard what she said. <laughs> the first ever African, like the continent, 
bobsled team, first ever African. Like that is huge. Mm, he That's did. history making right yes. there. That's, I mean, I've seen like we've had previous guests before from um, met Linnell Taylor mm. Grant, mm-hmm. who was a producer of the history yeah, track yeah. Um, that Toby and we we made. Yes. And we also know you went to school with Fendi, mm-hmm. and y'all worked out together yes. as athletes. Yes. I mean, so to see <laughs> their fellow, you know, you know, friend. Mm-hmm. Shattering <laughs> history, literally. Mm. This is this is amazing. So walk us through. Have you always done bobsled? When did you start doing bobsled? No, actually, after the 2012 Summer Olympics. Um, Wait, back it up. <laughs> uh, so this is the Olympian, y'all. So you were in the 2012 Summer Olympics, yeah. and you were running what hurdles? The 100 hurdles for okay. Nigeria. Yes. Okay. And so because I had already fostered an Olympic relationship with the country. Um, It was one of those things where I I had the opportunity to help a federation, which is the International um, Bobsled and Skeleton Federation, help the country of Nigeria, help the continent of Africa um, in a unique way. Uh Um, When I hung up my track spikes after that, I thought I was done being a professional athlete. Like literally done, 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 done. done. (laughs) Like in the oven done. Right. Um, But what ended up happening is that blessing from God that came with this coaching job opened my eyes to some of the things that I wanted to give back to athletes in general as far as their being able to reach their potential but I knew I couldn't do that unless I went back to school and so that was what actually drew me to going to chiropractic school Mm. and so I resigned from coaching and in that moment I had released the last ties that I had with any type of athletics and so I thought to myself you know what I should probably get back into a sport or something like you know kind of fill that void and since it was 2014 when that happened it was also the winter olympics in sochi and i had a lot of friends who had gone from track and field to bobsled so i was like well let me watch them and support them and it was as i was watching it i was like man this is actually kind of cool maybe i got a little tingle to get into another sport (laughs) yeah so i got into the sport i actually joined the u.s team when i first got into the sport i was a member of the u.s team i was a a world cup brakeman um, at park city and uh it was just as i was in the sport it started to dawn on me like man this sport's trying to grow they want more women in the sport um the country of nigeria is looking for their first winter olympians and the continent of africa has never been represented in the sport of bobsled and i was like man this has definitely grown to be much larger than me at right. like maybe this is god saying you know what show i need you for this this is right. what your calling is because i couldn't understand it i didn't understand why I would be in this wide bob, bobsled. When did right. I? I didn't know where it even came is. from. Like bobsled is the one that you want to do. <laughs> I ran away from Chicago because I hated the, the cold. cold. And here I am looking at bobsled. The whole winter <laughs> So was it? It was at that point where you're like, man, you know what? It's it's our time. Like literally. Exactly. To make this happen. Exactly. It was okay. like one day I was listening to the song "Arise" by Mavens, oh. and I was not. I've heard the song on repeat for ages. Right. But there was one day I was out and I was in, I can't remember where I was, in Canada somewhere at a bobsled track and the song was just going over in my head. And it's like, like some of the words are like, my Naja people where you date, I rise. Mm. And it's like, you know, basically saying you don't break, you know, you don't fear, you are, where you, wherever you are Nigerians, stick mm-hmm. together, we are one, we can arise, we can do. And it just like, for some reason that day, it just it's touched my heart and I was like, I gotta start this bobsled team. Yeah. And, uh, but I was like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do that? Right. I'm a first year in the sport. I, I don't, I'm just, I don't know anything about the sport other than what I've just learned this year. I'm in chiropractic school. Right. This is a brand new sport for a nation, a continent who has no clue. Oh, like, how am I supposed to be the one to do right. that? You know, and so I prayed about it, prayed about it. And eventually I was able to garner in a lot of support. I was able to reach out and um, get two amazing ladies, you know, to be my brakemen. And, you know, together we became the first team that the mm-hmm. country and the federation was able to represent as the winter uh, team. And then we were able to get Simi as another athlete who came to us based out of Johannesburg right. for Skeleton. Wow. And we came to the world with everything we had, all our heart, all our intentions, and became the first Winter Olympians for Nigeria. Y'all, that's... <laughs> I was, if you're not inspired, I don't know what you're inspired by. Because this, this young lady here, 
trust me, she's a young lady. This is I'm she's not even she's <laughs> in her forties. She barely just crossed I just 30. crossed thirty. So I mean, this is amazing. Five degrees, a coach, an Olympian, two time Olympian. Yes. And so what I kinda wanna know, like, what's the next move for you? Cause many can say, like, man, she's been so successful, like now we know she's gonna do this, she's gonna do that. I wanna know personally, like, what's the next step for you? You know, honestly, I think that one of the big things that I have learned, especially in this process of starting this Bobsled Federation, was that sometimes what we think is gonna be our outlook isn't always gonna be our, isn't always the outlook. You right. can plan all you want. But the one thing I know I am good at is trying to help inspire a generation and create success that runs on a continuum. Mm. And I have, I'm very passionate about elite level athletes being able to reach their fullest potential. That was yeah. the reason why all of this came to birth in the first place, yeah. because of that one idea to leave my comfort zone and go into an area that I didn't really understand, but I knew that it was gonna help the, the greater good. Okay. And so I'm very passionate about um, starting my practice in Houston, hey. in the Houston area. So check her out, y'all. Yes, I'm gonna be starting my practice. It's actually an entity that's already been established since 2014, but I'm okay. gonna build on that practice um, and have an elite level facility where athletes can come in um, and basically get everything that they need um, in one stop. And then I also want to continue to grow the Federation, the Bob Sun Skeleton Federation of Nigeria, which was formed officially in December of 2016. Okay. The beauty of that is we have like eight new athletes coming in. Hey, that's so amazing. This so is, what if somebody wants to become an athlete? What do mm -hmm. they do? Well, we have a website. It's okay. www.bsfnigeria.com. And there is a athlete resume there where okay. if you're interested in being an athlete, you just click on it and you fill out the resume and it comes into our database and we're able to see and then we'll reach out and um, try and figure it out. Because bobsled and skeleton is a little bit tricky, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're a warm nation and you're dealing with people who may even live in the cold. Um, and so people are generally spread out quite a bit. And so um, just trying to make sure to get everyone's information and get it all working. And that's where we are right now. Is, it, is there a specific type of athlete that you guys are looking or just any kind of person um, that has athleticism? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the, the unfortunate thing about bobsled and skeleton is it's not like everyone it's not like everyone can join because there's a certain number of slots. Okay. Um, and a lot of those slots are only dictated because of the growth that we have right now. Right. Like we're only in our second year, so we only have the capacity to handle a certain number of athletes. And so um, right now, it's we, we have plans of trying to you know put together a camp where athletes can oh um, okay. actually showcase their talent and be able to compete for these slots and these spots, and then also encourage others to continue so that once we can fulfill these spots, we can get more mm. um, as it grows, because that's how the Federation works um, with the International Bobsled and Skeleton Federation. Um, you have to complete a certain number of things within your actual Federation before you're given extra quota. So we just have to pay our dues along the way before we can really get a big empire of athletes. Wow, okay, okay, so those are the next steps. Check out her chiropractor um, practice coming out yes. soon. <laughs> and she's also planning on growing the federation, yes. getting more teams, more people to be a part of that federation. So I'm really excited for those yes. up and coming things for you. Um, quick question. While you were at the Winter Olympics, like did you have like this like surreal feeling like like man, this is like it's happening. Like tell yes. us about that. Absolutely. I think the biggest moment that always replays in my head is that moment we walked in hoisting that Nigerian flag hey. in the open ceremony for the first time ever wow. and just knowing imagining what people were feeling like seeing the country flag walking in even people that aren't Nigerian like standing and getting chills just knowing that listen I was <laughs> I was very proud <laughs> Oh, I was very proud. <laughs> yes. And people were just excited and knowing that it was such a breath of fresh air for so many people. Yeah. And 
Nigerians and non-Nigerians alike just had something to celebrate yeah. because the nature of how we started the Federation was we were able to garner up support. Like, even from you, oh, you man. guys need to know one thing. <laughs> Don't just let her <laughs> smile and grace over here fully. She's really been there from the beginning. I reached out to Aditi Ong and we connected and she stayed invested and stayed committed and I'm yeah, so blessed to course. have you yeah, in a part of this journey. So I'm I'm happy to know that you felt good when you saw us of hoisting course, that man. flag. I felt yeah. proud. You, I watched the Winter <laughs> Olympics, and you know I don't really see a whole lot of us there. You know, mm -hmm. and the few that I do see there, I'm always you know rooting for them. Team USA. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm born here, but when I saw Nigeria and I saw other African countries yeah. like come out, I was like, oh. This was historically the this most was literally Africans. our time like yes. to show up yes. at a Winter Olympics. When you amazing. say African, you say Winter Olympics. Like eh. it's jokes. It's jokes. <laughs> what? What did you say? But to see it physically, I think people now have that like understanding, and they feel like I can actually be a part of yes. a Winter Olympic yes. team yes. from you know Africa, wherever you're from, mm -hmm. Jamaica, Ghana. It was. South Africa, like mm -hmm. they were all there. So yes. it was amazing to see my country amongst mm -hmm. the African nations <laughs> to put the continent on the yes. back. Like that just that warmed my heart. Amazing. It made the whole journey completely a hundred thousand percent worth it. And yeah. would do it all over again with its stresses, with its whatever. Because yeah. I mean it's a learning when, process. When you do something new, you don't really have a true blueprint exactly. for that. Yeah. And so you have to create it. And so there's gonna be times in there, you know, where there are gonna be struggles where you're going to have issues yeah. or where you're going to run into you know, to detours. Uh -huh. But that's the that's the point. That's yeah. the process of starting something. That's that's the respect that you have for that process. And so, I mean, I think for everything that it was worth and all the people who stepped up to support, whether it was through our GoFundMe, whether it was just a message here or there yeah. or a like or a follow or a share or even physically being present. And when we did our, when we were trying to campaign for our little <laughs> fundraising events and for yeah. all our little bitty things here and there that just believed, yeah. that made such a big difference on the times when it was so difficult yeah. um, trying to just learn how to drive a bobsled and then trying to protect myself and my brakeman so yeah. I'm not sliding on my head down yeah. ice, you know, like to look at a message that says we're rooting for you or look at a message that says we're so proud of you or just a little thing that says you guys are amazing it just continues to encourage the little things matter and people shouldn't take for granted the little things listen done despite humble beginnings Th I know that you heard this thing, <laughs> but I want to ask you like since you know look Hey, she high key famous though. I'm not like she has I'm not like, oh, yes she is. She has a verified blue check on her Instagram. Oh. She's famous. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> has there been any celebrities that you have you know been encountered with through this journey, and have any of them poured into you guys' lives? Um, as you're walking this journey, I remember seeing you guys on Ellen. Mm -hmm. I saw yeah. you guys out here with Okay, you know. But I had to do it for Helen one time. I Ellen, saw Ellen it. on the uh, we at the when we finished the race, we were like Ellen, we gonna do something for you. So that was that was our shooky for Ellen. Okay, okay. <laughs> but outside of Ellen, has anybody you know else reached out to you? Whether they're celebrities or just influential people, that you're like, oh man, like. Man. This is amazing. Yes, there have been a lot, actually, like, to where I almost feel like if I just start naming them, I'm going to forget somebody right. that I thought, that I feel like is, when I, I looked at it, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, but really, to know that people that I looked up to, that I look up to or that I think are amazing or I, you know, respect their craft and their trade, know who I am, mm. like, know my name, hmm. like, me and hold me, and hold me. Ew, ew, me. <laughs> oh, it's it's been one of the most humbling experiences of life, and um, I, I can't even express it. Even just being at the Winter Olympics yeah. and some of the big winter names in sports, yeah, wanting to take pictures with with us and wanting to and knowing I saw who we a are. picture of you and. There was a Jamaican yes, bobsledder. That the, ori the original. Yeah. We had that bobsled team. <laughs> yes. From Cool Running. Yes, yeah. the original okay. bobsled team from Jamaica. They were there, and I took a picture with them. 
Um, and it just, to me, that was one of the most rewarding experiences to see in that, just in those pixels right there. Yeah. So much history that came full circle. Like, we were able to start our journey because of what they blazed. Right. And for them to see what they put forth and how it's continuing to affect the world. I mean, I couldn't be more honored to be in the picture with them. It was beautiful. It's absolutely dope, beautiful. Dope, dope. So, beautiful. so, I know you've been sponsored by a few people. Yes. Visa. Yeah. Under Armour. Yeah. Yo, she has a whole, they have a whole <laughs> E60, like, <laughs> special. Yes. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. amazing. I'm really honored. I'm proud. Thank you. Uh, to just, First of all, be a Nigerian to yeah. see that you're truly putting the entire continent on your back, you. and it's not one of those like one and done. It's one of those like we're gonna continue doing this. Mm -hmm. So before we wrap up, I know some of y'all see this beautiful shirt that I have on here. Yeah. Uh, so where can we get a shirt like this from? Well, we are actually so we're in the process of putting more shirts out. So okay. if you go to the link, it's gonna show that it's not there but okay. it is so I got like a, I got like a one of a kind. yes you actually hey. did get a one of a kind hey. this was like the I'm true excited. original <laughs> supporters of the bobsled hey. team coming in <laughs> so um we might come out with some like limited edition of those soon okay. but yeah so dsr actually dsr fashions was the company that helped created. us print these and okay. created those and that those were amazing we also are working on some other shirts um and probably working with dsr as well and maybe release shirts again um but we are like this is probably the one moment where we start to phase into actually building out the future and the fundamentals of what we're going to do okay. so um that's where we're at right now but if you go to the website www.bsfnigeria.com we do have a link for donations we do okay. have a link for if sponsors are interested in um sponsoring us because we are like i said building a federation so that what we promote it to bring to Nigeria and to Africa is what we're committing to right. and that is a, a, a presence a longevity and a something that people can look at not just for this historic team but in the future as you know maybe even a template to bringing on new athletes so we always are looking for support we always um, are accepting donations we're always accepting people who want to sponsor we have sponsorship packets where okay. you know we even are putting people's logos on either the sled on our clothes our helmets and things like that yeah. so international exposure there's just a lot of things that we're, we're shooting for and everybody's support is important okay and where can we find you at well, I am listed on Instagram. Come on, with the blue check, y'all. Verified. And Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and you know, the easy thing about me is my handles are at Sheon, S-E-U-N, underscore, Miss Amazing. Miss Amazing. Which is M-S Amazing. So, at Sean, underscore, Miss Amazing. That's me. Okay, well, thank you so much thank again, Sheon, for blessing us <clears throat> with your presence today. Oh. Stop. And again, you guys, it's our season finale, so you know, be on the lookout for the upcoming season. I'm honored to have Shane on here as our season finale person. Um, <laughs> tune in um, to some of our past episodes on It's Our Time, um, and look forward to the next season. 